hello guys today I'm gonna to be making my crock pot chuck steak and here I have the ingredients that I will be using I have two packages of chuck steak and in a previous video one my children said that I was the clearance queen and I am you see these things are marked on clearance that I purchased and these are some baby bella mushrooms that I'm gonna put in it and here's some beef broth and you see that's marked down for 25 cents and garlic powder onion powder lemon pepper some mushroom steak sauce some paprika kosher salt in this bowl black pepper and that's it and I have an onion too, but I'm not showing it right now. And let's have some garlic cloves up there. I'm going to go off camera and wash my meat and get my mushrooms cut up, my onions cut up, and I'll be back. I came back on to tell you that these mushrooms have the little stem on here. And you have to pop that little piece off. And then you have to dice them after that. I was just making sure I put that on camera and I'm gonna wipe them off a little bit you're not up here you're not supposed to wash mushrooms so I'm gonna just wipe them off with a paper towel and cut them up and then when I come back on I'll be seasoning okay, my meat. Okay guys here I have my mushrooms a couple of bay leaves I have tossed up there and my garlic I only have a small amount of that and onions I've diced them all up now I'm going to I've already washed my meat I'm going to dry it with some paper towel because I'm going to be browning this in some olive oil before I put it in my crock pot just to give it a little brownness to the meat and bring out the flavors in the meat and yes my sinks are clean so don't leave me a comment saying you got your meat in the sink it's been sterilized and clean trust me before I put this meat in here okay we have garlic powder going on the meat first onion powder my favorite smoked paprika black pepper and the reason why I use those things combined is because I don't like using seasoning salt because I want to give it my own saltiness to it because seasoning salt has a lot of salt in it and I want to be able to control my salt that I put in there. And this is kosher salt. Put some of that on there and kosher salt is not as salty as the iodized table salt so you can use a lot of it but not too much more than you would use. It looks like a lot because it's bigger and it's not as fine as the table salt. So it looks like I'm using a lot, but really, kosher salt isn't as salty. It takes a lot to make your food salt. Okay, now I'm going to get some flour on this and brown it and I'll be back. Okay, here's the steaks with flour on them. I'm going to brown them in this preheated olive oil and it's going to be only for about four minutes on each side just until they're golden brown and then I'm going to brown all my meat then I'll come back. Uh, here's my crock pot and the first thing I'm going to do is pour in these mushroom steak sauce. My can of beef broth. this beefy onion lifting soup mix but it's not a full packet I don't usually use the full packet it's been used this packet has used has some used out of it so it's not even really a half a packet I stir that around in there and sometimes I put cream of mushroom in here but since I have 
fresh mushrooms. I'm not going to need that today. So here's my mushrooms and onions and all of that is going in and my garlic. All of that is going in. And the only thing I do now is finish, finish browning my meat. And that's what's going off now. Okay, now the meat has, the timer has gone off of it. As you can see, it has that nice brown color. It's only been brown about four minutes on that side. And that's what you're looking for, that nice brown color to bring out the flavors in the meat. And I'm going to finish browning this, and I'm going to brown the whole other batch. And then I'll come back. Okay, here's all of my meat. It has been seasoned, floured, browned on both sides for four minutes. And this is what it looks like after I did that. And this is my skillet. It has all of that good brownness left into the bottom of the skillet. I'm going to just pour a little water in there. Like that. Because I need to get all of that out. That's what helps the gravy. I'm going to scrape all this out to go into my crock pot along with my meat. Okay, I'm going to put all my meat in the crock pot like that. And here's that little concoction that I made with the water and the drippings that were left in the skillet and then I just leave it here I have my timer I'm gonna it's been set for two hours but it's just gone down a little bit and this crock pot it it will go all night or it'll go for two hours it has a timer set on it and it'll go for two hours and it'll shut off and then it'll just stay warm until Whenever I come back and turn it off, I'll probably get up in the middle of the night and check it and turn it off. Or maybe I won't. I'll just wait till in the morning. But either way, I'll let you see what it looks like Hello, then. guys. This is the next day, and this is what the meat is looking like now. It has gravy on it. Some of this steak, I think, is sirloin, and some of it is chuck. But the ones that are chuck, I believe, they cooked, and they're a little bit more tender than the sirloin. And now the only thing I do is I pour this out of my crock pot. And if pot, I need to make it a little thicker, I just put a little cornstarch mixed with a little water. And I bring this to a boil, my gravy to a boil. And then I pour that in there, maybe a tablespoon of uh, cornstarch mixed with water. And that's how I make it thick. And that's what I do after that. Okay, guys, I'm going to make some corn to go with my steak. One daughter wants corn and the other one wants mashed potatoes. Cause, so I guess I'll do both. And the first thing in, in this pot, I have about two and a half tablespoons of butter, unsalted butter, and some bacon fat that I drained off of my bacon when I fried it. I put just a little of that in there to give it some flavor. I always do that even with my green beans, greens, any kind of vegetable that you want to have a bacon smell taste. To okay, it. this right here is a cup of heavy whipping cream that I poured. I'm going to pour my frozen bag of corn in there. I have two bags like this. And they're just 12 ounces. That's my heavy whipping cream. This is a half a cup of water. Sprinkle some black pepper in to taste. I like a lot of pepper in mine. Some kosher salt. Two tablespoons of sugar, maybe two and a half. Just to your taste, I think I'm going to do about two and a half. Two tablespoons of flour, regular all purpose flour. And then you just try to stir it around. And 
sometimes it won't stir as well if you let it sit too long. I should have been stirring it at the same time while I was pouring. But you just stir it around like that. And let it cook for about 30 minutes and then I have it on medium heat. And keep stirring as it cooks. And you'll see that it'll get thick and creamy. Then afterwards you can add a little bit more butter. I'm going to let this finish cooking and then I'll come back. Okay guys, I'm back and here is the finished product. You can add more butter once the corn finishes. And like I said, I cooked it 30 minutes. And I made sure I went and stirred it like every 5 or 6 minutes. Just so it wouldn't stick and make sure you use your best non-stick pot because that corn recipe is known to stick especially if you don't stir it every once in a while okay guys see y'all in the next video thanks for watching and don't forget to comment like and subscribe to my channel That soul food cook. I like the way you're making everything look.